Hey, that's me again. <laughs> so I'm in the library near my house um, on campus. So I'm trying to record as many videos as I can while I have decent internet to upload them. Um, I'm just going to talk about more of the Pagan YouTube Challenge questions, and hopefully I can get caught up in this video, and then I'll post one video for each question after that, and then a couple other videos here and there. So we left off with question 10. What do the moon phases mean to you? So with the group that I work with, we celebrate espits. Uh, so every full and new moon, we have ritual or class, depending on where it falls in our cycle of how we do classes versus ritual, since we are a teaching tradition and we do a lot of actual learning of the tradition and of our practices and how, how our rituals work and our liturgy and so forth. Uh, but to me, the, the full moons are a time of creative magic. It's a time where you can, where magic is all about bringing things into your life. It's about power and growth and fullness. Whereas the new moons, or the dark moon as some people call them, um, I always know them as new moons, those are kind of about times of banishing when you want to rid something from your life, either it be bad habits, negativity, um, stuff like that. Anything that you want to rid from your life, that would be the time to do it. So I guess that's kind of what they, those phases mean to me. Uh, number 11, what does the sun mean to you? Um, I never really thought about this one that much, though a lot of the Sabbaths are based on the sun and the Espets are all based on the moon. Uh, the Sabbaths are sun holidays, they're harvest like based around the movement of the sun and the movement of the year and the seasons. Um, but to me, the sun kind of just represents part of the god, whereas the moon represents part of the goddess. Uh, so I guess it's just one form that the god can take. Um, but I don't really have any other views beyond that. Uh, I tend to work more with darker deities, so even though I do have a, like, I believe in a duality of light and dark, it's kind of hard for me to apply more symbolism to the sun at this present moment. But I'm sure if I sat down and, like, tried to write it out, totally could. In this moment, not the easiest thing for me to do. I just don't have much symbolism attached to the sun personally, right now in my life. And number 12, what does this time of year mean to you? So this question tends to happen in the middle of March. That's when it's supposed to happen. So right around kind of Ostara-ish. Uh, and Ostara is kind of that holiday where like you know it's spring. Like spring is here, you can see it happening, and it's beautiful. Like everything is starting to come back to life, things are blooming, there's just life everywhere. And of course there's pollen, and I want to cry. But everything is so beautiful at that point. It's the time when the ground is starting to come back to life, the frosts are starting to disappear, and you can start planting and get your hands into the soil. And for me, that's a great time. I love that time of year, being able to plant things and then see them come to fruition and reap that harvest at some point. That's kind of what that part of the year means to me, is planning for the harvest. Number 13, do you use divination and what types? Yeah, kind of. Um, I work with tarot and runes. I also do um, meditative divination with like flame and water and stuff like that as well. And I'm also learning um, osteomancy, which is bone reading, either casting bones or uh, burning bones and fires and then reading the cracks. And so I'm 
currently reading a book that I'll do a review on once I'm done um, called Throwing the Bones, and so far it's pretty good, so expect a review for that at some point in the future. Um, but yeah, so I do do divination, just depends on what I mentioned at the time. Mostly it's tarot and then like osteomancy. Runes I do more for myself and less for other people, whereas with tarot I will read for other people. Number 14. What does magic, or magic with a K, mean to you? Um, so I kind of look at this differently because I know some people will see it as spell work and some people will see it as just general magic, which as a, as a pagan and a Wiccan I use every time I have ritual. Magic is energy raising. It's um, calling the elements, calling the gods. It, that is all magic. Spell work, on the other hand, casting spells and stuff like that, I don't do as much. My my focus in my path is more on worship of the gods. I do practice herbology, which is also magic, and I do spells occasionally, but the primary focus of my practice is worship of the deities that I work with. And so number 15, which will make me caught up, and then I can do every video after this with one topic on each video, which would be great. So number 15, which I kind of talked about, is do you perform spells on a regular basis? Not really. Uh, I do herbal herbalism stuff and herbology on a regular basis because that is my true love in the craft is working with herbs. So I make incenses all the time. I do teas. Um, in fact, I sell them and I'll probably, I don't have an Etsy shop at the moment. Um, but I'll probably post something about what I sell, what I make, and stuff in another video at some point. Um, but that's kind of the only magic that I do on a regular basis is herb magic. And occasionally I'll do like mini spells, like while I'm walking around and stuff like that. But I don't really do spells on a regular basis, unfortunately. So that's just not a part of my practice, really. But we're all caught up. 1 through 15. So I expect a video on question 16 coming real soon. Okay, bye.